Eight. Hello again. Today we're going to tie a little bit of an interesting fly, really. Um, this is a fly that I first came um, across on the fly dressing channel on YouTube. Um, uh, Nicholas Bauer tied this for perch, and if I just take it out the vise, and it's basically like a clouser minnow with a spinner blade off the back. Um, and he tied this for perch, but I thought what a great fly that would be for the bass um, up the estuaries and you know on the beaches and that. So I thought I'd give it a go the other day and I, I tied a, a few up and I took them up to the Hamble River where I live, where I do a lot of bass fishing actually. And they work amazing. Like I was, I was really impressed. You can't strip them through the water that quickly because the inertia of the blade spinning behind the fly call or wants to turn the hook itself. But on a moderate strip through the water, it fishes really, really well. Um, so I thought I'd tie it for you today. Something a little bit different. Um, it's basically a clouser minnow, if I get me, get me fingers out of the way, it's basically a clouser minnow with a spinning blade on the back. Um, and, and yeah, anyway, so I'll, um, I'll stop waffling and we'll, we'll get on and tie it. So obviously the first part of this fly is going to be attaching the spinning blade. So in the vise, I'm going to put... This is a size two long shank style stainless steel hook. And I'm just gonna put a little tiny dab of super glue on there like that, just to hold. Um, these saltwater flies do get battered. So anything I can do to help hold everything together, bit of super glue on the shank, never goes amiss. Um, we're going to run the thread down. This is just UTC 140 in white. Um, and I have forgotten, I have forgotten something else here as per usual. But we're going to attach the spinning blade when this is just like nylon. I think it's about 50 or 60 pound actually. You don't need it. That strong clearly and what I'm going to do is the end the very end I'm just going to chew a little tiny bit and what that does is it roughs it up and it it helps the thread to grip so I want I want this if it's going to behave itself to be just on the top over to one side so I can lay the other piece once I've put the blade through down alongside it and they'll both be on top of this shank which is how I want it so I'm going to wrap the thread back I'm just going to come in and trim I don't need all of this tweak I'm going to take that off like that and now I'm just going to a little bit more glue on there just to hold it all together I mean you don't need to I tend to I mean it's where I tie a lot of pipe flies I go go a bit overboard sometimes with Super glue. Now, this is just a little um, teardrop shaped spinning blade, and I've put instead of a clevis, I've just put a uh, split ring and a swivel um, because obviously that would just spin like that. I don't need it. A clevis will obviously help it spin round and access like that's how it would normally come on this little. I'm sure you've seen like spinners before. Um, clevis is a great word isn't it and um, it's one of those words that I don't know it, I just like the word clevis anyway we're going to measure it up and I want the spinning blade to come off the back it's going to be about there so I'm just going to catch with a couple of turns and I want this piece to run down where's my little pointy thing to run down right next to the other piece okay so we're gonna just have some patience 
run the thread down nice and neat all the way down doo -de -doo -de -doo. like that just have a little look am I happy just gonna shorten it ever so slightly um, like we said before you've if you're not entirely happy I don't know where my wax is there it is when if you're not entirely happy just go back just go back sometimes it's I know I do tend to go back a lot on flies just gonna pull that through just gonna shorten my thread up I'm gonna put it through and then come a little bit more that's better I'm happy with that there so I'm gonna run the thread down I'm just gonna put a bit of wax help everything grip Run the thread down to the back and I'm going to come under, whoops, come under, over, under, get the blade out of the way, over, now I'm going to run my thread back up. And that's all you really need to, uh, that's all you really need um, to help that stay on there I mean it's not essential you glue it but I always do now we're going to put the eyes on and I'm going to make a little bump just here of thread because this portion here where you've got the bare shank is pretty much where all the tying is going to go on so I'm going to make a little bump of thread here and it will give something for the dumbbell eyes to just nestle against that's it, I'm going to tie these on the top like we would a clouser minnow. We're going to come around. I'm going to make sure that these are straight. Can you see they're all wonky and not right? Well, if you want, if you want these eyes to go back straight, so if you want them to pull this bottom one you want to go to your left, um, come over that way with the thread and it will drag the eyes back you'll see it's not the world's best explanation of that but you'll see when you do eyes when you go around one way like i am whoopsie daisy now you'll see the eyes begin to turn so if you need to get them to turn in a specific direction you just go the opposite way so i'm going to have a look look this way when i'm happy i'm just going to do some wraps over the hook shank under the eyes and whoopsie daisy and that's just gonna help to seat those eyes nice and properly and a little bit of super glue I always glue eyes I know some people say oh you shouldn't do that but you know what I've always done it like that and my eyes have always stayed on right now you're gonna have to sort of be patient with the blade because it is going to get in your way a little bit I don't know whether we can use, probably not, because it's not long enough. Anyway, I was going to put a hair clip on it, but I don't think it's long enough. Anyway, right, now for the body of the fly, and to kind of help cover this join here, I'm just going to take some crystal flash. This is just pearl, pearl crystal flash. Quite fine stuff, I'm just going to fold it fold it over and then I'm gonna fold it over again I'm gonna run the thread down I'm gonna move the blade out of the way I'm gonna catch it right at the back just like that I'm gonna fold this bit over catch it like that run the thread back up and then I'm just gonna trim the edge like that it's just going to help get rid of any you know the join basically not that it really matters I think it um it matters to us looking at it more than it does the fish that are going to eat it um, this fly kicks out so much vibration um, once you've once you put the fly in the water and just let it drop you know it it's kicking out vibration on the drop as well as the retrieve so this is uni mylar um, it's Unimylar in Opal, 
and I'm just going to run this up the body just to hide all these thread wraps. It's going to come up. It's a nice easy body to do. I'm going to come up like that. There we go. I'm going to take the eyes, I'm going to take the mylar, sorry, under, and I'm going to actually tie it off in front of the eyes. There we go. And trim. There we go. I'm just supporting the hook with my other finger. And now I'm going to come in with some UV resin just to protect the mylar. That's all it is going to be, is just to just to protect that mylar. So I'm just gonna come round with the UV resin. I've got to watch your blade nice and gently. There we go. Just gonna move some of this up. About there, have a look. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna give you a sort of translucent body. And you can see the the fluorescent fishing line that we used to um, attach the spinner really shines through. You can see the red shining through there. Once that's set, once that's set, we can get rid of the UV resin for a moment. Okay, right. Now I'm going to just take the fly out and I'm going to turn it around in the vise just to make it slightly easier for me. There we go, because the rest of the tying is all going to be done on here. But before I do that, underneath the eyes, whoops, underneath the eyes in this bit here, I'm just going to colour it all in red, just to give a little bit of a an aiming point, maybe, maybe simulate gills. But I always tend to do this. I'm not the world's best with a felt tip pen, but I don't think it really matters. There we go. Okay. And now it's just a matter of basically tying a clouser minnow. I mean, but all on the top. So we're going to take some... I'm going to take some white bucktail and I'm going to take the hairs from the top because I don't I don't want this to flare at all so we're going to take a pinch take it off the hide pull out all the short bits all the bits you don't want there we go okay and now you want to measure it so that it's not going to interfere with the spinner. So that's going to be, it's going to be about there. So I'm going to trim that at the measure. I'm going to put wax on the thread. Don't know whether I've moved that. Whoops. But wax on the thread. I'm going to come in and catch this. Just catch it back. Whoops. Don't let it roll on you. It rolls on you just manhandle it back there we go take it back there okay we'll try not to move that too much in the vise uh, super super sharp scissors just misjudge that bit so I'm just taking off little um, the little bits of hair that I didn't mean to get to get caught in there. There we go. Right now we're going to put some more of this pearl uh, crystal flash, and I'm going to mix. I've got about three or four strands, and I'm going to mix it with silver. Okay, I'm going to fold the silver in half because it's quite long. 
right? So that's just silver crystal flash mixed with the pearl. And just gonna catch it on. Come down, put it back, catch it back. And there we go. And I'm gonna trim this staggered, so nice and tapered, about length of the white. Okay, it is quite a, they can't miss this fly. It's quite a flashy, in your face fly. Now we're going to put two saddle feathers. Uh, so I've just got a, uh, a saddle patch here and I'm just going to take two feathers of appropriate size. So just have a little search through it. They'll, they'll do. So I've got two feathers there. I'm just going to take, whoops, I'm just going to drop one on the floor because, you know, why not? And now these I want to be a tad longer, a tad longer than the actual um, white bucktail. And I'm going to sort of tie these, not quite on the top, but it's also not quite on the side. <laughs> just to confuse you. Um, like sort of flat wing style, I'm tying these in. So measure them up. So just measure them up equal in length and tie them in sort of flat wing style. There we go. Trim off the excess. Come on. This isn't exactly, exactly how Nicholas Bauer tied this fly, but um, it's close enough. Um, have a look at the fly dressing dressing channel if you're interested in uh, if you're interested in it in that bit. Right. Um, if you're interested, sorry, in how Nicholas tied it, I couldn't get my words out then. Now we're going to put a little bit of blue flash over it. This is just crystal flash again, and I'm going to take maybe four strands again, something like that. I must admit, I didn't count, I just drag a load. I just drag some out like that. If you can um, hear that noise outside, it's, it's the rain. It's absolutely smashing it down today. So, I've taken some blue flash out. I'm gonna fold it in half, like that. Got it. And now I'm going to tie this in on the top, how we, you know, exactly how we tied in the, whoops a daisy, how we tied in the uh, feathers and come over. So I'll come over one side of the hook point, the hook point's there, and around the other side. Okay, and now I'm going to trim these off a little bit longer and taper it again so don't just cut straight, stagger the cut. Right then, now you can see I've got some grizzly saddle feathers in there, but before I put them in there, I'm just gonna put some chartreuse bucktail. And again, I don't really want this to flare, so I'm taking it from high up the bucktail. So again, I'm just gonna take off the short bits, get my measure. Trim, wax my thread, pop it on, catch it, have a look. That's lovely, nicely on top. So now I'm going to tighten down, put some wax on my thread here. I don't want my thread slipping and just tie back. There we go. That's lovely. And now we're going to put two grizzly feathers on. Uh, and that's it. It's quite a quick fly to tie. Uh, grab my grizzly feathers. Little big. I've got this bugger pack here of grizzly feathers that I'm just using up. 
but it's perfect for things like this. If I can find two, two feathers that will suit my needs here. Those two are lovely. So I've just picked two off the hide. And I'm going to tie these in again, flat wing style. So sort of on the top. It's one. Take the other one. Tie that in. Make sure I'm happy, which I am. Tighten up. Come in and trim. Okie dokie. I'm just going to move because I've been moving that about. Right. Now I'm just going to have a tidy up here. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to whip that off. Just like that. Come in and trim. Because I'm actually going to finish the head with, this is Glow Bright Fluorescent Floss. And it's in that lovely chartreuse colour. This is number 12. And yeah, literally... Just going to finish the head off with this. So I'm just going to catch it on. And then spin it, flatten it out. And now nice and carefully, I want to just a nice bright chartreuse head. Come around, do de do de do. Let's have a look. Come down one more time and back up one more time. There we go. Right, whip that off. Oh, snapped on me there. Did you see that little monkey? But that's all right. That's all right. I haven't done that in a while, have I? We'll just catch, we'll just catch that on. There we go. If that happens, don't, don't panic. Just, um, just sort it out and it'll all be okay. There we go. I'll just tidy this up. And now whip that off. There we go. Right, I'm just going to come in with some UV resin now. I'm going to come in with some UV resin, finish that head off. Make it nice and strong. So we're just going to come round, making a nice strong head. Don't worry about your spinner blade flopping about all over the place. It's going to come in. And do another coat. Another coat of UV resin. Come round. And there we have it. Now, this is actually great fun to fish this fly because it's so different. So you've, you've got a clouser minnow um, and a spinning blade. Let's see if I can take it out of the vise and show you properly. There we go. So there it is. I can grab hold of the eye. Give me a second. And there it is. That is, honestly, try one. Just give it a go. I know it's something really, really different in fly fishing terms, but... Try it, just try it. You've got the spinning blade here. Uh, 
At least if I can get it in the vise, I'll be able to show you properly. Come on. You got the spinning blade there. No, it's not going to work. And the clouds in minnow. It's very, very jiggy. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And the bass absolutely love it. They they absolutely love it. I get it back in the vice. They absolutely love this fly. And, you know, as Nicholas Bauer tied it, um, he tied it for perch. It's a great little perch fly too. Pike will nail this. Any predator, really. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed that one. It's something a little bit different when it comes to um, time flies. Um, but if you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.